Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about something unusual that was recently observed by amateur astronomers when looking at Jupiter. It's something that happens quite a lot, but nevertheless surprises us every time. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. And let's begin by looking at what was actually seen. So this is from Ethan Chappelle on Twitter, and you'll see it in a few seconds, right here. There's a little white spot that suddenly occurs on the surface of Jupiter. Now, can you guess what this is? You probably can. It was basically a collision with Jupiter that was observable and visible from really far away. Here's a slightly easier way of seeing this. This is the image created by Ethan Chappelle himself. So um, what we've observed is actually not very uncommon, even though it is quite impressive and quite interesting. But before I tell you what may have collided with Jupiter, let's talk about some of the more famous examples of collisions with this beautiful planet. And it just so happens that we even have this simulated in Universe Sandbox. It's a pre-made simulation that shows us what happened back in 1994. You may see the date on the bottom there. So um, this is something that was super exciting back in 94 because a lot of scientists uh, were observing Jupiter at that time and making a lot of really interesting predictions. You might remember what happened if you were um, around back then, and if you don't, well, basically it was a collision with a comet that broke apart and it had several pieces that collided over several days. This was the comet discovered in 92, known as Shoemaker Levi, named after the discoverers. And as you can see in this actual photo, it was basically like a little train of cometary pieces, anywhere from a few hundred meters up to about almost two kilometers in size. Now, even though it technically doesn't sound like a really large comet, it ended up producing some really spectacular things on the surface of Jupiter. And even though the scientists tried to predict what's going to happen to Jupiter, they really didn't know. So there was a lot of really interesting observations conducted here. And here is one uh, done in infrared. You'll see that the explosions uh, that happened on the surface were actually really powerful and created a lot and a lot of heat. And this heat was so strong that it was visible for several weeks afterwards. The temperatures here were close to about 24,000 degrees Celsius which is basically a pretty hot environment. And considering that these fragments, despite their small size, were able to produce formations that were basically size of planet Earth or even larger than that, it does kind of make you wonder what would happen if these collided with our planet. So this is actually a kind of a realistic representation of what happened on Jupiter. The actual um, fireball that was produced, that was really, really hot, created these beautiful waves that propagated across the surface of Jupiter at a speed of about 500 meters per second. And it, you could actually even see them move across Jupiter in several different spots. And what's really interesting about each of these collisions is that they all left these very interesting dark spots on the surface that were composed of different materials from those comets or from, from the cometary pieces. And they actually stayed on Jupiter for several months. You could easily observe them with um, a relatively small telescope. And uh, these were even more easily visible than the great red spot of Jupiter. So each of these spots that was created, which we're going to do right now as well, stayed there for a long time, was very visible, and generated a lot of energy. Now, remember, the original comet we think was only about maybe two kilometers in size. Just to give you an idea, here is what the Halley's Comet, one of the more famous comets, looks like. This is at least double the size of that smaller comet that collided with Jupiter. So um, an object that's only this big generated a tremendous amount of energy and very visible effects on a huge planet like Jupiter. So let's just maybe finish these collisions. You'll see how each of these uh, cometary collisions will leave a very interesting mark on the surface. And so um, all of this left Jupiter with roughly around 21 different marks on the surface. In total, it was something like 6 million megatons of energy that was released, which is roughly around 120,000 times less than the super famous star bomb, the biggest nuclear weapon ever detonated. So this is kind of what Jupiter had for a while, and um, after a few months, everything went back to normal and these spots disappeared. 
But the interesting thing is that um, these spots were formed by the material from those comets, so we could actually study what's inside of them and discover the composition of these comets. And that's because the um, comets never really reached the lower levels of Jupiter, all of them sort of disintegrated and exploded much before they reached even the water level of Jupiter. All of this happened at a really high velocity of roughly around 60 kilometers per second, and because of this, the entire um, comet basically just exploded in the upper atmosphere before it reached even two atmospheres of pressure. By the time it reached three atmospheres of pressure, it was basically already kind of gone. And so this is something that's pretty common in Jupiter. Today we believe that roughly around 2,000 to maybe even 8,000 more collisions happen on Jupiter than they do on Earth. And that's really important because it makes Jupiter, I guess you can call it a vacuum cleaner. It's literally the solar system is a vacuum cleaner that sort of collects all of these comets and all of these asteroids that would come to Earth otherwise and has them collide here instead of colliding with our planet. Many scientists today believe that because of Jupiter, the complex life was able to evolve on planet Earth, and that without this beautiful giant, we would probably never have a chance to evolve to the point where we are today. But that's not really what this video is about today. Today, I wanted to briefly talk about what was observed by Ethan Chappelle right here. So, we know that this was a pretty powerful explosion as well. As a matter of fact, it's almost size of Earth. It's a huge explosion, it's several thousand kilometers across. But as you can see, it only lasted for maybe two seconds, three seconds maximum, and then sort of disappeared. The only reason um, Ethan Chappelle was even able to see it is because he had some sort of a software running that was meant to detect these flashes and explosions. And so this here is actually something that happens quite often and is um, caused not by a large comet like you just saw, with Shoemaker Levi, but something much, much smaller. As a matter of fact, we think that this rock here was probably only about 10 meters across. And that's really mind blowing. It's a much smaller mass, it's a much smaller rock, but it's able to produce an actual flesh pretty much comparable to the flashes we saw with Shoemaker Levi. And that's of course because these are uh, the explosions that happen initially when a super fast object reaches the upper atmosphere and generates a tremendous amount of energy that generates an explosion. It's an, what we would call an air bolide. And today we're pretty certain that a very similar impact occurred back in 2010 and another one in 2012 because we saw a very similar flash to this and it only lasted for two seconds. And one major difference between this flash and the ones from Shoemaker Levi is that after we looked at it again, the surface of Jupiter did not have these very distinct patterns that were formed by the material from the comet or from the asteroid. This was seen back in 2009 though, when an object that was roughly around 500 meters collided and left this mark that you see here. So a larger asteroid would produce this, but a smaller um, rock that's only about 10 to 20 meters would just explode in the upper atmosphere and would most likely leave no mark. And so this is how we can distinguish what collided with Jupiter. But these smaller collisions happen very, very often. As a matter of fact, um, We've always tried to kind of understand how exactly the moons of Jupiter, like for example Ganymede, got these unusual formations. Now you can imagine how they actually formed. This was created by another similar object, possibly a comet, that approached Jupiter. And when it came too close to the planet, because of the tidal forces and the gravitational stretching, it fell apart and created this kind of a line that you see here, formed by the uh, fragments of the comet or the asteroid. And eventually, just like back in 1994, this whole um, train of comets or asteroids collided with Ganymede, collided with Callisto and other moons of Jupiter to form these unusual patterns that we can now explain pretty easily. So this is just another example of how often these collisions on Jupiter do occur. Although we think that the bigger ones, like uh, Shoemaker Levi, only happen maybe every few thousand years, these smaller collisions happen pretty regularly, with small rocks like one we just witnessed happening possibly every year, several times a year. And because so many astronomers have been looking at Jupiter to try to find more of these flashes, we've been able to discover quite a lot of them in the last uh, few years. 
But I guess the most important takeaway here is that Jupiter is exceptionally important for protection of life here on Earth, and these collisions happen so frequently that without this beautiful planet, we would have probably been gone long time ago. It literally sucks in everything from the outer solar system, it's able to influence many different asteroids and comets and sort of bring them closer to itself, and those comets then fall into the planet here instead of falling on a much more fragile planet Earth, just like you're about to see right here. Now, the collision with a comet right now would have probably have such a devastating effect that it would literally wipe out pretty much all of the major complex life on the planet. Just like another comet did 65 million years ago when it collided with our planet right here and caused the destruction of pretty much all major dinosaur species on the planet. So comets do cause major trouble for us and we need to make sure we're able to somehow divert them if they decide to come too close to our planet. For now though, Jupiter is definitely our best protector and our best chance at surviving. Anyway, so hopefully now you know what happened a few days ago from when I'm making this video and why these collisions do happen very frequently. In some of the future videos we'll explore Jupiter and collisions on Jupiter in a little bit more detail, but for now that's it. Thank you for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.